Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all for Leadership and Junior Eleven Speaker Joe Whitney coming to you with another key moment for faith. Thank you so much for joining me on this broadcast. Today, we're going to do the second and final part of this series, How Should Christians Respond to Those Who Are In Need? How Should Christians Respond to Those Who Are In Need? Before we go any further, make sure you click on the subscribe button, subscribe to this channel, share it with your friends, share it with your neighbors, share it with the guy down the street around the corner, share it with your family members, you know what, share it with your enemies, and they may just happen to become your friend. Also, check down on the links below for inspirational, aspirational, and empowering faith-filled books that are going to help you grow on this journey we call life. As I said, we're going to be discussing very briefly today, how should Christians respond to those who are in need? Now, yesterday we talked a little bit about taking a risk and extending yourself uh, beyond your comfort zone. Uh, I gave a little bit of an example about some decisions I made when I was a child and you know, many of us don't really know what it means to take a risk. Uh, we've never put anything on a line. If, it, if it's going to require us to give up just a little bit of our comfort to sacrifice anything, you know, that word sacrifice is a dirty word in many Christian circles these days, but it's going to cause us to sacrifice anything uh, that we don't want to be a part of, anything beyond dropping a few dollars in the train, letting somebody else handle that so we don't have to get our hands dirty. But unfortunately, Jesus is calling us and he's calling on us to go beyond our comfort zone, to go beyond that which is normal, to go beyond mediocrity in our service toward our fellow human being. Unfortunately, many of us have fallen prey to becoming the Pharisees and the Sadducees of the day, those people that were discussed in the parable of the Good Samaritan. You know, in the Good Samaritan, it was the Pharisees and the Sadducees who walked by the man who was laying wounded and injured and beaten and robbed in the middle of the road. They walked around him because they felt that he was too unclean, that it was too dangerous to get involved. They didn't want to get their hands dirty. Uh, they didn't want to be seen helping someone uh, who was they, they deemed to be beneath them. Uh, and so many of us have become like that. Uh, not, not as much in our deeds per se, but certainly in our hearts. Uh, you know, I'll go help out the little people or, you know, I'll throw a couple of dollars at it. But I truly believe that Jesus is calling us, especially in these days, to step out and step beyond that which is normal. You know, if in the previous season, you know, maybe you were given to a charity and God will honor you for that. But I believe that in this season, I want you to pray about this. Maybe, just maybe, God is asking you to dedicate some time, set some, set some time aside, you know, at a soup kitchen or at a food line or go out and pray for people. You know, prayer does change things and prayer matters. Uh, maybe there's someone on the street that just needs a hug. You know, I, I uh, ran into a, I uh, actually didn't run into a gentleman, but I was at a friend of mine's uh, place the other day. And uh, some other, another friend of his came over and uh, we were talking for a while. And before I, before I left, I just felt my spirit that I just needed to give him a hug. I know this whole social distancing thing is going on. Uh, and you know, people are afraid to touch each other and they, they don't want to do any fist bumps. They want to do kind of like a little elbow bump. But I felt in my spirit, the Lord was really leading me just to give this, uh, this person a hug. And so I, I, you know, gave him a hug before I left and he was surprised. He's like, oh wow, a hug. I haven't had a hug in a long time. I mean, like they really meant something to him because it was led by the Holy Spirit. And you know, I didn't get sick. I'm not hacking all over the place. My eyeballs aren't bulging out of my head. Uh, but that gentleman just needed a hug. And so, you know, many people will look at that situation and say, you're crazy, you're out of your mind. You, you violated the 
uh, social distancing uh, uh, requirements, which are not requirements, but they are, they're certainly suggestions, but you violated that and you're going to die. Well, we're all going to die of something someday. And uh, we cannot be fearful of losing our own lives in service of the kingdom and being the hands and feet of Jesus here in the earth and extending love to those who are in need, who are in dire need and dire straits. And so I am challenging you today to uh, reject the hearts and the mindsets of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, uh, where no one is too low to reach down uh, and pick them up. Uh, no one is so unclean uh, that they are un, uh, undeserving of God's love and God's grace, uh, that no one is so far out of reach that you can't touch them and see about what their needs are. Maybe you are not the person uh, who has the resources, but you really know someone who has the resources and the ability and the talent in order to do those things. And so I wanna give you uh, basically just three ways, just three ways that you can help those who are in need today. Uh, and it's not going to take a lot of you. You don't have to break the bank. Uh, you don't have to dip into your savings. So these are three ways that you can reach out to those who are in need or serve the needs of those who are in need. Number one, just as I stated earlier, uh, be willing to reach out and ask people how they are doing. That's something everybody can do. Ask how people are doing. Do you know that there are people who have gone through this entire crisis, who have gone through this whole situation, and no one has reached out to them to see how they are doing? No one has asked, do you need food on your table or your children being fed? Or maybe they're a single person and they just need someone to talk to. So the number one thing you can do is ask someone, do they need help? Number two, pray for those who are in need of help. And I don't mean just in your prayer closet, in your private time. When you ask, when you reach out, you're gonna see how this builds on top of the next thing. When you, when you reach out and you ask someone what they need help for, extend a word of prayer right then and there. Do not wait and say, you know what, brother, you know what, sister, I'm gonna be praying for you. Uh, the word of God says that you, if you have the ability to do it right then and there, do it. And so you're going to reach out to the person, ask them how they are doing. Secondly, you're going to pray for them on the spot. It may be a short prayer. Maybe they don't have, a, they don't have time for you to go in and, and call down the fires of heaven in your prayer. You know, that's something that I, I enjoy doing. People that know me and how I pray, I really get into prayer. I love prayer. Uh, I, I love being in God's presence. Uh, I love speaking his word and speaking life in a situation and, and, and cursing things that are not in line with God's word, diseases and illnesses and all those things. I believe in calling all of that out. And so, but you gotta ask first and then you need to pray. And so you need to pray about it. And then after you pray about it, then you need to do something about it. Okay, so we have asked, we've prayed, and we're gonna do something about it. And I said, you may not be the person who has the resources, but you may know someone who does have the resources. Uh, you may not, uh, that person may be in need of some bread. Uh, and maybe you can go to the store and pick them up some bread. They may need some food for the kids. You don't have a whole lot of money. You can pick them up some uh, peanut butter and jelly and some bread. They got some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to keep them for a couple of days until some further help comes along. But you're going to ask, number one, you're going to pray, number two, and number three, you're going to do something about it. Why? Because God is a God of action. He's not a God of talking. He's calling for us to do the same thing. You know, we love to pray, uh, but we don't love to put ourselves in the midst of help solving, uh, helping to solve the problem. And so God has well equipped his people to help those who are in need. You think Unfortunately, many of us have been deceived into thinking that you've got to be a multi-millionaire before you can help someone out. I often hear this phrase over and over again, that you can't help somebody unless you help yourself. Well, I'm here to say that you will, you will actually help yourself through helping someone else. Listen to what I'm saying here. 
you will help yourself through helping someone else. Again, I'm not talking about breaking a bank. I'm not talking about going broke. I'm not talking about digging the last can of tuna out of your cupboard. But I'm saying that when you ask someone how they're doing, you honor God. When you pray for them on the spot that God will uh, will minister to them and comfort them and his grace will shower over them and he will supply their every need, God is going to honor that. And when you extend yourself to help someone else, as I said, if you have, you give. If you don't, you find the resources. You help that per person to identify the resources that are necessary so that they can get the help that they need. When you do those things, you're honoring God. And because you honor God in those things, and you've extended yourself and you are operating as the hands and feet of Jesus here in the earth, guess what's going to happen? God can't help but to honor you. He can't help but to bless you. I can name numerous times when I didn't have the finances to give uh, in a particular situation, but because I asked, because I prayed, and because I did, I may not have had the, the financial resources, but I knew someone who had the resources. I had access to other people who might be able to move in a situation. Because I took those steps, God honored me. And so I believe that God wants to honor you too, people of God. So how should we how should we help those who are in, in need? How are we to respond to those who are in need? We are to ask, we are to pray, and we are to do something about it. And I believe, people of God, that when you do that, God is going to honor you. There is no doubt whatsoever. God is going to honor you. So I pray that you guys are doing well during this season. I'm going to I'm going to be a person of my own word right here and right now. I'm going to ask you how you are doing. And if you have anything that's going on, please let me know. I am going to, secondly, I'm going to pray for you uh, in this discussion. So if you have, you send, you send, hey, this is what's going on in my life. I'm going to pray for you. And number three, I'm going to do something about it. So if I don't have the resources on hand to help you out, I will certainly share something that may be able to assist you or give you access to some information that may be able to assist you in your situation. Why? Because I believe that I'm the hands and feet of Jesus in the earth, just as you are. Those of you who are believers, those of you who are sold out and truly believe that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. We're called to do more than just pray for people. We're called to be people of action. So I thank you guys for joining me on this broadcast. Stay tuned for the next broadcast. God is doing some great things. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, reach out, connect. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Again, I'm also Leadership and Team Development Speaker Joe Woodley. Thank you for joining me on today's broadcast. God bless you guys. I look forward to connecting with you again here soon. God bless you.